Okay, good morning, everyone, um, and welcome, and thanks for your time again this morning um, to listen to what will be our last um, Overberg Geoscientist Group presentation for 2021. So I should just also then wish everyone well for the festive season, stay healthy, and um, make sure you've had your vaccinations, and um, have, a, have a really pleasant break, and let's hope that 2022 is somewhat more normal in this um, unusual world of ours. I'd like to introduce Martin Etzebeth this morning. Martin is a, a local um, now here in Hermanus. So we've known him since I think about um, 2014 or 15. Um, he previously, in his previous life, worked in, in the old South African prison services for about eight years and then ran a brokerage and then a pub in Pretoria for, for another 14 years. He's now been in Hermanus since 2005. And as you'll see, and as he'll tell you today, he's a mad keen bike rider and photographer. Um, and he's also a real expert with the drone and been taking wonderful pictures around um, this part of the world, including um, monitoring our, our various estuaries. And we've got a lot, or he's got a lovely series of our estuary, at the, the Klein Refir estuary opening and closing over the years and over a period of time, it'll be interesting to, to look at that whole process. He's gonna to talk to us today about the mountain passes of the Western Cape. So, so over to Martin, and we really look forward to your, your presentation, Martin. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Good day, everyone. Um, yeah, this is all new for me. Um, yeah, as uh, John said, we come from Pretoria when uh, we arrived here in 2005. Um, quite a, a nice area to live in. I think it's uh, one of the best places uh, in, on, in South Africa and maybe, um, might even be in the world. Um, we've, we just uh, love it down here. And uh, as John said, I'm a keen motorbike rider. Um, and then also photography that, that goes with it. Um, yeah, the, the opening photo of these uh, mountain passes of Western Cape is uh, one of my drone photos that I, I took of a sunset uh, from Sunbai where we, we live. Um, so yeah, every day is, is different and every day is, is just very beautiful. Right, then uh, just want to get this slide. But then the next slide, I hope it shows that you'll place your screens. Um, as I said, I'm quite new to this. So I think what I see is what you see there. Um, yeah, as I said, we are quite blessed to be living here. Um, beautiful part of the country. Uh, I've been a keen motorbike rider when I was much younger. And then uh, 17, 18 years without a motorbike. And in 2007, uh, I got up one morning and I said to my wife, uh, I think of getting a bike. And uh, she said, when? <laughs> so we, we, we traveled to Somerset West from Armanus and uh, that Friday, I had my first KLR 650 Kawasaki, which is a very capable and nice bike to do these gravel roads around where we live. Uh, yeah, I'm a keen motorbike rider on the gravel roads. Um, the road less traveled out these, uh, the nice roads to take and uh, to enjoy it oneself. Um, this particular slide photo is um, the back road from Caledon all the way to Genardendal. Um, and uh, you can see the wheat farms there. Uh, people busy, busy producing food in the area. Uh, in the winter months, um, there's usually canola on those fields, uh, which makes it also very nice. It's the, the Sonder End Mountains there, the backside, the backdrop, uh, also in winter covered with snow, which, which gives you lovely scenery. Um, always a nice road to, to drive on. Um, yeah, the roads in, on, in this area, is, it's quite nice. It's been maintained quite well. Uh, we often joke about it that the gravel roads in the Western Cape are even are better than the roads up in Gauteng that, that should be tar roads. But yeah, that's, that's just the joke and uh, unfortunately not a joke anymore. Sometimes it seems it's, it's the truth. <laughs> Good. Then going to the next slide is um, just a map of the region and its many passes. Now, these are just some of the passes that we've got in this area, I think um, there's, there's a lot more than just these showing up. But yeah, these are the number of passes 
that's all very nice to drive. Um, scenery absolutely beautiful. Um, and then a lot of them were built by the Baines, which um, were great bars builders in this area. All right, the first one we're going to touch on is uh, the Shores Mountain Pass um, that uh, runs on the R320, which is between Caledon and Hermanus. Um, back in 2007, when we start riding these roads, this was still a gravel road uh, with not a lot of traffic on it. But it's been taught in, in the meantime, which uh, makes the traveling from Hermanus to Caledon much easier. Uh, and it has become quite a busy road, but still a very nice road to, to take out. Um, the traffic is not that bad in this area. So uh, if I talk about traffic, it's not a major problem. It's, it's still a very, very lovely road to take. Now, if you, you stand on the Shores Mountain Pass and you look to the east, you see the valley of Tesla's Dal. Um, and it's, it's a very nice valley with a little town, also Tesla's Dal, um, which was the farm of Arte Beeste River that was granted in 1781 to Johannes Jacobus Tesla as a payment for his military service of, for the Dutch East India Company. And it was apparently one of five farms on loan in the Overberg Overberg to Tesla that he received. And then at his death at, in 1810, his farms uh, went to his uh, widow Alcher. And uh, following her death in 1832, under the terms of the Tesla's joint will, the farm Artebeester over was left to nine former servants or slaves and their descendants. So, uh, yeah, these. The, the people were well looked after. Um, if you go over this uh, Shores Mountain Pass, and you get to see Caledon in the distance. Um, and then this Yimlin Arda road that I'm talking about, and that's on the next slide, you will see the Babylon Sturen Mountain. Uh, the top left photo is on this. If you travel this road and you see the bath on the poles, that's, we call it the Kuringaisi path, the road. And um, there's also a nice overnight facility, but the mountain top that you see sticking out there is the Babylon Sturing Mountain. Interestingly, it's a 1,135 meters above sea level, which makes it 84 meters higher than the summit of uh, Table Mountain. So yeah, Slide on the right bottom is in the Yemen and Arda Valley Road, just past the Campu turn off. And from there on, you start seeing this Babylon Sturing Mountain. Now, this mountain you can see from east, west, north when you, you're traveling to Hermanus, um, as far as rivers, the views from the end in the east. Once you get from there on the end two, you start seeing Babylon Sturing Mountain. If you come from Cape Town side, as, as soon as you go over Saluris Pass, you start seeing this mountain. So it's, it's quite an icon and a, a beautiful place to, to, to visit. But this is just uh, also Tesla's dolls, uh, photos of the area. Um, the road to Tesla's doll is still a gravel road. Um, as people traveling on the motorbikes uh, love doing the travel on gravel roads. Um, and uh, yeah, one of the few roads that's still a dirt road. Uh, years ago, Bart Skitters Bos was still a, a gravel road. Now it starts, still a very nice road, but yeah, we prefer to do the gravel roads. Um, the, the bottom left slide is um, at, if you stand at the Boskantour, uh, also a nice venue to have a breakfast or lunch in Tesla's Dal, and that's the road going out of Tesla's Dal. Good, then we get to the Akkadusberg Pass. Now the Akkadusberg Pass is um, known as the southernmost pass on the South African continent. Um, we do this route to get to Bredasdorp and from there on to the southernmost point, Agalas, which is also a very nice place to visit. Um, and then also if you do the Akkadusberg Pass, you also get to some gravel roads that goes through the ruins which we also like to travel on the bikes. 
um, nice piece of area that's also farming community producing wheat and also canola in the winter. Um, the Akadisberg Pass is it's a, quite a long pass um, and it runs adjacent to the Klein River. Now the Klein River is, is one of the interesting facts about it is that the beginning of the river and the mouth where it ends out into the sea in the Klein River Lagoon at the Grotto Beach in Hermanus is about five kilometers from start to end. Uh, apparently one of the, the only places in the world where it's so close together. And then it runs all the way from, from the beginning, it runs easterly to from Brakel Stuart where it more or less turns and then come back past the Raqqa wine farmery, um, passing Stanford, and then ending up in the, the Klein River Lagoon, which then mouths out in the, in the sea. Now, we've had some good rains the last year, exceptional rain that we've had. And in a 12 month period, it's uh, opened twice, which I don't think has happened a lot of times. Um, it's still flowing at this stage. And as John said, with the drone that I, I take photos, I've, I've had some nice aerial shots with the drone of the Drain River Lagoon. Uh, beautiful place. Uh, yeah. Then the scenery along the Akadisberg Pass, it's a beautiful mountain road, um, lots of Feinbos, Pratia, um, and on the right hand side, you see the Klein River, also a very nice river that you can do boat trips on at Stanford, um, but yeah, nice, nice river to travel along. Right, then we, we get to the Garcia Pass. Now the Garcia Pass connects Riversdale to Lady Smith. Uh, in the Klein Kuriu. Um, it passes over the Langeberg Mountains and um, the board on the right hand top is uh, just the information board where you can see it was built in 1877 um, and then it was reconstructed in 1963. I presume all of these mountain passes that's nowadays Tar roads was uh, all gravel roads in those er those times that it, they were built, and for a long period it's been maintained, and uh, very very nice road also to travel along. Um, the bottom photo that you see there is the Sleeping Beauty uh, mountain that you see uh, from Riversdale. Um, not many people can see her. But it's a head showing with, and you see the eyes and the nose, and then to the left is a body to the feet. You don't see the feet, but you see the head quite prominent. Um, also, got very nice scenery, and as I said, traveling um, to Lady Smith through the Garcia Pass, very nice long winding road. Yeah. Weather conditions also in the Cape, as people that live here know that we can have four seasons in one day. Um, we doing the last trip that we took to Garcia Pass, I think it was about March, April roundabout. I stopped at that uh, information board with my motorbike and we had gushing winds and, and, the, and the motorbike actually blew over. Uh, my side stand, uh, the gear lever, uh, the brake pedal actually break, broke off and uh, I had to quickly go into Lady Smith, uh, Riversdale and uh, get some repairs done quickly. Uh, to be on the road again. But yeah, also one of Bain's passes. The next slide you'll see is the Garcia Pass going over the Langeburg Mountains. Um, nice weather there, wind and fog, and also Fangbos. Right, then we move to the Gedo Pass. Now, the Gedo Pass is situated in, uh, close to Sirius and Citrodal between them. Um, on the Sierra side of, of the mountain, the Tronsberg Mountains, or Tronsberg Mountains, um, you get the, the Gedo Pass. Now, that was also built by Andrew Gettysbane, um, constructed in 1848. Um, very nice, long, winding pass um, going up the mountain there. Now, if you travel from Sierra and you take the Prince Albert Road, uh, you go then up the, the Gedo Pass. Um, I'm just going to 
some information here. Uh, yeah, the Gede Pass um, actually means it's a steep passage. Now it is very steep. We we once came from the Cedarbergs down the Gede Pass, and one of our friends didn't look where he was going. He was uh, looking at the scenery and actually ran into the barriers and dislocated his shoulder. So all of these passes, you have to look where you're going. Uh, a lot of them has, has nice turn-off points where you can actually stop and then enjoy the view that, that all of these passes uh, show us. Uh, on that photo, you can see the snow on the mountains. It's one of those mountain passes that gets a lot of snow in the winter. And uh, yeah, we, we had some fair share of winter this, this past winter with, with lots of snow. Still lots of rain. We, we're still experiencing rain now in December. The past weekend, we, we had another 34 millimeters in Hermanus. So uh, strange weather that we've had, but yeah, still very nice. Okay, this, this photo I took is a panorama photo on the top of the Gede Pass just before you descend into the valley. A very rich, fertile valley, valley with lots of foods getting produced there with the Transburg Mountain on the left-hand side that you see, and then you see the winding road of the Gedo Pass going down into the, the valley. The mountain range you see there on the right-hand side is the Matrosberg. Um, we'll get to, to the Matrosberg and the actual pass that also runs on that side of the mountain. On the other side, also that mountain gets a lot of snow during the winter, um, and there's also a nice four by four route on that mountain. I know. The uh, Gede Pass was constructed in 1848, as I said, and then reconstructed in 1938. So it's all old passes that were built. You can see the Sears Valley on the bottom right uh, with the, the valley there and all the dams and all the fertile uh, plant, uh, the fruit that gets grown there. Um, and you can see the Matrosberg Mountains covered in a cloud cover. Right, then we go further north on the Pakos Pass. This pass runs to the Cedarbergs, the lovely Cedarbergs. I enjoy going there with a motorbike. It's, uh, it's always a nice trip. Uh, and if I say I go there with a motorbike, we often travel with a car as well and take the family along. Uh, a very, very nice pass to ride. In 2009, we went on a trip to, to look at the flowers in the Cedarbergs. And at that stage, this pass was still a gravel pass. Uh, and then they, just when we went through, they were, were beginning to, to tar it. Um, but yeah, also a very, very beautiful pass. The Cedarberg Mountains is, is special. If you pass, you go on the pass to the north to Glen William and Calvinia, you get to the turn off um, of the Englishman's grave where you then go down into the Bido Valley. Uh, from the Bido Valley, you go to Wuppertal, then through Eselbank, and then through the Cedarbergs back all the way to Obdiberg and uh, to Sierras. So also very, very nice route to take. Now this, on this pass, it's, it's the grave of uh, C. Louis Leipold. He was, uh, uh, one of the authors of many books and poetry. So his gravesite is, is there. I saw in the week, interestingly enough, on Facebook that the copper plate was stolen off his grave and some people took the initiative and uh, put a new block on there. I think it was marble so that, that the people don't steal it anymore. You can see here the Parkers Bar scenery. On the left is the mountains there. There was also uh, aircraft accident in those mountains quite a while back, um, which is uh, very dangerous, these mountains in the fog and the mountain. It's when it's raining and the cloud cover that comes down low. So uh, yeah, quite interesting that happened there. The photo on the right is um, at the end of the Pakes Pass, or the, the summit of the Pakes Pass, just before you go down into the valley. Uh, and you can see the beautiful valley running down there. Um, at this particular point, if you look to the right, and I unfortunately don't have a photo of it here, um, you can see the Cedarbergs mountain range, which is, is also very nice. 
En dan is als het de Engelsmanse graf. Het was een lieutenant in die the war that uh, died there and he was buried there. But now we we move to Bainsloof Pass. I think Bainsloof Pass is uh, one of the older passes. It was built in 1849. Um, and um, also a very nice pass to drive, a very dangerous path. Uh, a lot of people has made accidents there. Again, these passes one should travel with caution and stop at the lookout points and then enjoy the scenery. It's quite difficult to, to drive and enjoy it. Um, it's the, the Bainsloof Pass is also being uh, a national monument uh, that's, that's been declared. As you can see on this slide, the Bainsloof Pass, the road is narrow, the, the rocks has been put as uh, a barrier that you don't fall off the road or don't go off the road. It's important to 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 look at those barriers and in and in see what dangers is actually is there at the, the bottom. The overhang on the right hand side is a nightmare for trucks. Um, a few trucks have got stuck there at both sides of the pass. There is a a board on chains over the road, showing the, the height that you can actually travel there through safely. Unfortunately, a lot of people ignore that and then get stuck here. And if they get stuck, then the traffic gets pulled up and people can't pass, as I said, a very, very narrow pass. You can see on this slide also the, the scenery and the challenges that the pass builders had of cutting through those rocks. Um, the mountain there at the back is at Wooster and the yeah, very, very beautiful pass. There's also a river running down there. In winter, after the rains, the river flows quite strongly and very beautiful scenery. On the other side or the western side of the Bainsloof Pass, you see the Detroitloof Mountains there in the distance. And in the far distance is the mountains at Stellenbosch. Now, again, also you can see the road going up the mountain, a very, very steep mountain pass. Uh, again, very, very beautiful scenery. Now, the pass was built in 1853 and then reconstructed in 1934. The information boards that, that get put on these mountain passes uh, gets done by the Cape Mountain Passes. You can see the web address on this mountain pass board. Now, a lot of people, unfortunately, put these stickers on to make their mark and say that we've been here, uh, or with these guys, you can see had a spray can and uh, they just destroy these boards and, and the information that gets uh, feed to us. Now, I know the guy, Robbie Roberts of Cape Mountain Passes, is doing a great job of providing these boards, uh, these information boards that they put up on the mountain passes so that we that travel then can actually see what's going on and what's being offered to us. Uh, he is on the road trip at this stage and he's been doing it for the past year, I think, uh, going around the country, cleaning up these boards, um, covering the bullet holes, you know, the people use them as targets, shooting at the boards. And uh, we met him on the road to the seven passes, um, in February, where he was busy cleaning one of these boards. So yeah, he's doing a great job. And uh, you can also uh, lock into that Cape Mountain Passes. And there's a small fee that you can pay annually to get all the information and all very valuable information that, that he provides to us. Also very, very nice road to take. Good then, I think one of my favorite passes, the Trudeau Pass, which runs between Barrydale and Swellendam. Um, also was originally built by Thomas Bain. Uh, Trudeau's path means women's path in the old Kwe language. Um, quite also a dangerous path if you don't look where you're going with, uh, with a lot of points where you can actually drive off the road. It also goes through the Longeberg Mountains uh, that brings you to Barrydale. Now, if you turn off at the into 
just past Buffaljax River, you get the, the turn off to Seerbrock, and then you go through the little town of Seerbrock, which then eventually brings you to the turn off of the Trudeau's Pass. Um, yeah, very nicely engineered pass with uh, the rock mountain face that you can see that they pulled up a lot of engineering that worked into this stonework to actually do the foundations of these passes uh, to keep them intact. You can see this board also has been uh, there for target practice. <laughs> right, some of the scenery, if you stand at the drip calder, it's uh, almost like a cave that you have there, and there's always, usually, always water dripping down the ice cold. We've, we've traveled through there quite a few times with the motorbikes and stopped there and took it like a shower just to cool off. Now you can see on the left the, the deep gorge that's there and the, the river that through, flows through it. Uh, that's to the south. And if you look to the northwest, you will see the photo on the top right. Um, the bottom two photos is of the Andres Ace Bridge, which used to be the old bridge that was uh, built with the Trudeau Pass going up the mountain. Um, when we initially started traveling these roads, uh, and visited this bridge. It was still intact. Uh, you could still walk over it. Unfortunately, there's no maintenance to it. Nobody cares about it anymore. And the bridge has collapsed. There's no road going over it anymore. And uh, sad to see it. Yeah. Here you can see the drip calder I was talking about. That was this was taken from about halfway. At the pass, also nice stopping points. At the top there, at the drip calder also, you can stop the a big parking space where you can enjoy the views there. Um, and you can see the stone masonry and the workmanship that, that went into the sides of this pass to keep the, the foundations solid. Right, I talked about the Axe River Pass earlier on, if you travel on the N1 between Cape Town and Gauteng, you get the Axe River Pass that uh, runs from, well, just after the Dwellings, you go up, up the mountain, the Matrosburg Mountains, and you get to this pass here. Uh, the, Axe, the Axe River Pass, when we traveled here, I think it was around about 1976, was still a very narrow pass with just two lanes going up and down. Now it's a big road. The N1 is quite busy with a lot of trucks traveling this road and uh, going up and down from Gauteng to Cape Town. This is just the slides of some photos. Also, the mountain gets a lot of snow. The left photos also, again, the information board that just gives you this information about all of these passes. On the right hand photo at the top, um, they say that is the sailor standing there on his boat. And that is where the Matrosburg Mountains got their names from. The bottom photos, you can see the snow capped mountains, which uh, we get a lot of snow in winter. And all of that water is then flowing into dams and rivers that goes down into the system. Again, a yeah, very lovely panoramic photo of the vineyards that's in the Axe River Valley. Uh, I think most probably one of the most fertile valleys that produces a lot of grapes and wine. Good. The mountain passes, as said and shown here, was made mainly built by Andrew Geddes Bain um, and his son Thomas Bain father and son that, that built quite a lot of passes. I think they were great engineers, uh, big talent that they had, uh, built us beautiful roads that we can travel and enjoy. And uh, yeah, I think we must uh, enjoy the roads, travel them and tell other people about it so that everybody can enjoy these, these beautiful places we, we have here. Good. And as I said, I'm a keen photographer. We, we live in the beautiful Hermanus with Walker Bay that we have the annual Southern Right Whales that come to visit our shores in the winter. Uh, these were just two Southern Right Whales that I do 
took the photo of, of the cliffs here at Atmanus. Good, I hope uh, everybody enjoyed and uh, thanks, thanks John. Okay, thanks everyone. Um, and thanks Martin, that was, that was fantastic. Um, let's just un unload you and then we can get um, questions and answers going. Um, so, stop share. Okay. All right, can everyone can everyone hear me? Any of you still there? Okay. Right. I've just come back online. Yes. So okay, fine. great. Right. So so question time, guys. Um, um, so, so, so just thanks to Martin and um, I, I mean, my, my quick comment, of course, is that we have these two amazing characters, um, Andrew Geddes Bain and Thomas Bain, and clearly built roads that have survived the test of time. And most importantly, you know, those, those foundations and containing walls have now been used for, up, you know, they've supported the upgrades as well. So just a credit to their engineering work, as Martin said. And one of the things we will be doing at the beginning of next year is one of the first talks um, will be on Andrew Get Andrew Geddes Bain, who aside from his road building was obviously a key, um, our first geologist and, and, and compiled the first geological map of Southern Africa with an emphasis on the Western Cape. And a descendant of his, Camilla Kraft, will be talking about um, his life and history. So that's just a a teaser for the new year. Anyway, question time. Okay, thank you, John. We've got uh, John Geddes Blaine here on screen now. He's got a <laughs> got a question. Yeah, uh, no relative Blaine. and no misspelling either. But uh, I certainly admire his work, and uh, I think uh, thank you, Martin, for acknowledging uh, the group uh, Mountain Passes because. Uh, I, I followed them for some time, and you've got to really take your hat off to these guys who continue to go around cleaning up these very interesting information boards. At, uh, and uh, the idiots in our world um, still persist in defacing them. And I think anybody who ever comes across anybody doing that or seeing these stickers should actually make a note, take photographs, and let's help mountain passes build up a, a real name and shame board to get these guys to change the attitude. Of course, there's nothing you can do about bullet holes, but uh, it is unfortunately a sad sign of the sort of rampant gun, gun wielding um, population that we have. And, uh, sign boards in South Africa and elsewhere. I'm, uh, John, you probably remember from the Western US. I've seen it in the West, <laughs> Western Australia. Anybody who carries a gun and there's a sign board, something, they, they're gonna have to put holes in it. So there's not much we can do about that. But let's thank Mountain Passes for the efforts they put into it. Yeah, agreed. Yeah. And Deirdre Richards, Deirdre, we'd like to hear from you. I mean, you, you, you here on Hermanus, um, if you'd unmute yourself and even show us your face. Um, and you've got a really wonderful copy of that um, geological map of Andrew Geddes, Spain, that we still want to get a copy of and, and hang here somewhere in our geological group. So are you there, Deirdre? There we go. In, in the text, it says uh, Judy McFarlane. Uh, she says, Thank you very much for this tribute to her great grandfather, Thomas Bain. Yeah. Well, Deirdre or Judy, Judy. Uh, so we want to see your face, Judy. Out. Are you there? No? Okay. Interesting, John. Um, but, when we so I'm, I'm, sure, John, I'm sure the guys will be knocking on to get some information for that. For their books. Okay. John, it's Bruce Rubich here. Uh, Bruce. You know, I'm living in Grafenet now, and just outside Grafenet is Oberg Pass, which was the first of uh, Andrew Geddes Bain's passes. Does anybody know when he built that pass? 
I'm wanting to set up, um, and I've been discussing it with Cameron, some notice boards on some of these passes around GraphNet and the historic significance of those. And, uh, and, and so I've been talking to Cameron about the best way to do it uh, and to try and see that you don't get notice boards with bullet holes in them. <laughs> uh, uh, I suppose the best way is to, Cameron's got some fantastic app that he's got that you can look at on a cell phone. Um, but I, I think that if maybe one can put notices on a plant or something like that, I suppose feel them the, that also. Mm. No, Bruce, I mean, uh, Martin will, will immediately go and search and presumably his colleagues at Mountain Passes would probably have some of the history. I mean, they've done amazing work and research. But, but you know what, I mean, the sadness is that, you know, for many people who, who, who are just driving the route and stop to have a look, the signboard is important. You know, not all of them will have access to or, or be interested in looking at it the way you and I would with an app. So we should yeah. certainly still be doing that, but you know, the, the, the signboard still has has a lot of um, power and imagery, you know, for ordinary people. Yeah. And you know, yeah. we also need to, as we talk, Bruce, you know, get it down to kids and the disadvantaged, and make those people realise what mm. what is out there as well. Yeah. I see you. You see, you call it the Oberg Pass. I've, I've quickly searched here. I see they call it the Van Reinefels Pass. So. It might have been the Oberg Pass uh, in the old time and then renamed to the Van Reinefels Pass. Is that no, the, no the they're, 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 they're two different passes. The Van Reinefels Pass is just outside Grafenet and he built those at the same time, Oberg okay. and, and Van Reinefels Pass, yeah. Yeah, because mm -hmm. I know these two other Oberg Passes as well. The one is just outside Montague on the way to Toes River and then yeah. you get the Oberg Pass that's from Sutherland down into the Tankwakaroo. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. so I'll, I'll investigate we'll this over pause and uh, we'll get back to you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah, interesting. The, the Cape Mountain passes, Robbie Roberts does a great job there. Uh, the bullet holes, he's got the stickers with the same color as the boards that, that brown, and he covers those holes with the stickers. Um, now, when we drive around these areas um, and stop at these boards and taking photographs, I'm, I usually take more photos than what I should. Uh, we stop and we actually pull off the stickers. Uh, we were once stopped by someone and said, but you can't, you, you're destroying property of someone else. So I said, well, they started destroying property of someone else when they put their stickers on. So, yeah, we stop and we, we pull it off. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, no, we've got Martin fired up now and, and next year we'll get him to do the passes sort of to the east. He tended, you know, this talk focused on sort of the western passes and up to Cedarburg, like the gorgeous Pacais, but there's a whole lot more passes, as you'll know, Bruce, around your part of the world. So we need to cover those as well. Yeah, well, that'll be great. Yeah. Okay. Old Graybeard says there's a rough, rough stony track on top of Pacais Pass to the Yenenflat village in Cedarburg. The stonework is of a very high standard, beautifully executed. He wonders if Baines were involved. The Baines were involved there. Well, I guess to hazard that guess, you could probably say yes, um, Benny, given you know the quality of the work they did, and I think their signature was quite characteristic, the way the the rocks that were cut and fitted together. But you know, something else for Martin to do some homework on. Martin and Leslie say thank you very much. He's planning and or he's planning to go and explore passes now. That's good. <laughs> okay. Sorry about the noise in the background. Yeah, Leon, I think, uh, sorry, Leon Fent has got his Leon has got a question for us. Thanks. Yes. Thank you. Come in, Leon. Come on, come on picture as well if you want. Yeah. Unmute yourself. Can you Unmute yourself, Leon. Can't hear you, Leon. Have you still locked us out, Henny? No, 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 he's fine. Okay. Is for, he just needs to, it's a sitting on his on his uh, camera that, that he just has to fix. Otherwise, you're going to use sign language, Leon. 
<laughs> Can you hear us, Leon? Just thumbs up. We can't hear you. Sorry. You might have to text. Yeah. Give us a text question, Leon. We can't hear you. Here we go. No. Cameron. Right. Anthony. Anthony, you had something to say? Uh, yeah, I, I just wanted to say thank you to Martin. I mean, this is a, a dream passion of mine to go and ride those passes down there. I'm sure Martin's uh, probably, because of his biking passion, reads uh, Nick Gill's articles in Bike SA. Now, I, I've recently come back to biking, but I've got myself a Tora in the form of an RT, not a GS like you've been showing. But the roads down there, you made the comment because I'm in Gauteng. You made the comment that the dirt roads are better than the Gauteng ones. I, I mean, do, will an RT handle it without getting messed up too much? Your opinion, please. Yes, yeah, there are some of the roads. Uh, we call them gravel highways. Um, and yes, there are some of the roads that it's uh, maintained quite well. Uh, as that road that I showed where my Jesus is actually on, if you take it slow, you can comfortably ride it. Um, when we did the Pockets Pass, interestingly enough, the guy that went with us, a very good friend of ours, Brian Geyer, was on an RT, and uh, he did all of that Pockets Pass that was still a gravel road, all the way up to Van Reinsdorf, which is all gravel roads, and he did that on his RT. So, yes, very doable. <laughs> well, you're only pushing me into getting into trouble with my wife, but I appreciate <laughs> the advice. Thank you. Take your wife along. That's that's the <laughs> She's not a biker. <laughs> well, you make her one. <laughs> you take okay. your wife twice the price and half the pleasure. Always remember that. <laughs> so spoken like an expert, Munro. <laughs> yep, you got that right. <laughs> okay. Any more? Uh, any anyway, you want to wind well, up? I think the Corpus, Corpus, Corpus Feta is on the screen. Now, just want to sort of air a sort of gripe that I've got with a with a language that people use. Is this Americanism that's coming into South Africa now for the last couple of years? This dirt road thing. I mean, there's no way that those roads are built of dirt, you know, as the Americans say. <laughs> I mean, it's properly designed, you know, often. You know gravel roads and uh i actually was an examiner on a phd you know which is probably one of the best in the world by philip page green on the design of uh you know gravel roads it always irks me when you know when people start talking about dirt roads and i wish i could actually sort of get something to sort of say every time uh, people mention dirt road you know <laughs> some sort of a pavlov type of sort of thing to sort of say so you stop you doing it but uh now, I think the, the, the reason, and I don't know, it's still the case of the good quality of, of let's say generally good quality of Cape Roads, is that they brought a, um, a system in and a contract a couple of years ago where the gravel roads in uh, the Western Cape was properly maintained. I mean, there was someone appointed and they graded the roads, but they also compacted the roads properly. So it was a, let's say, engineering type of sort of uh, maintenance. You know, where in the other provinces, and uh, I would say also outside South Africa, you know, that is not the case. And, you know, you get these really so sort of horrible sort of uh, gravel roads and allowing the roads to deteriorate, you know, un you know, until a sort of stage where the roads almost have got to be rehabilitated. Thank you. Yeah, yeah Leon Corbus, you're absolutely right. I mean, we're very fortunate here in the Western Cape, and we've been re recently, we went to Sutherland and then through to Madhavaville. And going down, you know, to Madhavaville and dropping down the pass, they were actually working on the road. And, and you quite rightly so say that, you know, the quality of, of our roads and, and um, our gravel roads are actually excellent. And, and it all goes back to that maintenance. Martin, your 
Rammelkop Pass is the pass you're yes, talking yeah. about. Yeah. Mm. A beautiful pass also to, to travel along. Yeah, um, yeah we, we call it the dirt road because you must see if we tend bikers uh, following each other, <laughs> there's a lot of dirt involved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's that's where that comes from, I think. <laughs> Yeah, Leon Fett has now come through with his message. He says it's nice to see that features like the Engelsmanns Kraft is in such good condition uh, as opposed to what you often see on these features. Normally they are untidy and vandalized, but this one is in very good condition and he's impressed by that. Yeah, and Henny, just to add there again too, I mean, it's a, it's an important point he makes and I think Martin will bear me out. You, you know, you, you drive some of these back roads and particularly around these small villages and towns, there's actually still an interest in cleaning them up, um, you know, so people will be out there picking up litter and I guess it's also a way of creating jobs. And also mm -hmm. not just that, the, the travellers that yeah. travel along these roads, they stop and they pick up the rubbish yeah. and they maintain the places. Yeah. So. It's uh, the people that, that travel these roads contribute to, to keeping yeah. them intact. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I mean, Dave Arnold is on, online now. He says he travels the Grand Pire quite a lot. Dave, what have you got to add to that? Uh, hi, Annie. Hi, John. Um, just to thank Martin for a fantastic talk. I think he, he made all of us feel we should have been doing what he was doing a long time ago. Um, I just, uh, I have walked a little pass. It starts at, at the top of the Piccaneer School of there's a little resort there and it goes down into the valley and it's not used because they've rerouted the pass. But the stonework on that pass is unbelievable. It's really fantastic. And, and because it's not used, it's not deteriorating at all. And I was just wondering whether there are lots of other uh, passes that the Baines built that uh, are not in use anymore and you, you're not able to see them unless you get off uh, onto, your, onto your feet and walk down there. Interesting, uh, Dave, yeah, a lot of these passes and even on the um, Trudeau pass, you can see the old route to the left and the right of the, the, the current pass. And that used to be the old road that was initially built uh, and then redesigned and rerouted after a few years. Um, even if you go down the front loop pass, you will see that. And then, interestingly, the, the oldest pass, the first pass, went up the. Okay, sorry. Okay, carry on, Mom. Sorry. Yeah, the, the old front loop pass was called the Cats Pass. Um, now, if you stop there at the top of Franz Hoop Pass and you look over the valley of Franz Hoop and you walk just a little bit back on that uh, road just next to the star road, you actually get to the monument um, saying that that was the oldest pass built. And you get to see all of these stone walls still alongside the current passes. So, yeah, you, uh, you're right, quite right there. You can use to and a lot of other passes as well. Thanks very much. Uh, John Blaine. John Blaine has got his answer. Just let him unmute now. He was his phone was interfering. I had to mute him. Unmute yourself, John. Yeah, sorry, Henny. Um, yeah, no, actually, I just want to throw in one at the end there, one which is not for driving, but uh, was supposed to have been made for driving, which is the Busman's Kloof between Grayton and McGregor. And uh, in all honesty, it's it's uh, in, it's a really nice uh, hike, as many people are probably know. And the top end of that on the McGregor side was a magnificent const attempted construction cut in under the mountain there. And you can certainly see why they stopped it because they were getting themselves, I think, into very deep water, into very deep rock. And it was just too much from the, for the convicts to bear, I think. So if anybody wants to see the remains of an unfinished pass, I would recommend that you actually go up the McGregor side right to the top and uh, walk down the trace of the old pass uh, to where it ends uh, a kilometer or two down the Wisconsin Cliff, or hike it up from from Grayton, which is spectacular as well. Absolutely, so the, non, the non driving passes, uh, Martin. That's right, yes, you are. and a very nice hiking route to take. And, and, and maybe there are enough volunteers and engineering geologists here and Corvus and Philip Page Green, you know, to go and take a challenge and open up that pass to uh, make it a track for vehicles. Please, uh, please, 
I'd also like to put a challenge out to the volleys up there. There are a lot of passes up there that you can now go and photograph and show us and stories behind them, you know, like the Long Tom and all of those places and that pass in Lesotho that ran, just ran into the mountain and the contractor absconded because he couldn't get any, any elevation on his pass. So, uh, you know, a lot of nice anecdotes for you guys to give us another pass talk next year. Okay. Thanks, Eni. Thanks, Martin. Thanks, everyone, for your, your um, engagement. And a very festive season to you guys. We see you next year, it's around about February, eh? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Thanks, everyone. Bye.